Okay, it's been a while guys, but Mark has the week off. He'll be back for the rest of the fluke season. But here's just a quick video I put together of my last fluke trip. It's a pretty interesting day. It was loaded with shorts before and after a block of four or five nice keepers. And the last fish I caught was pretty nice indeed. So here's just a little montage of all the shorts. And, well, not all of them, like 10% of them. Um, I was actually using a Kitech Easy Shiner. So right here is the bait. That's the five inch Easy on a 3 16th ounce Gammy Jig Head. So I was bouncing between the 3 16th and the quarter ounce. The rod is my Steve's AGS 7.6 Medium Medium Light. And the reel is my old theory. And that reel has caught a ton of smallmouth. But first time in the salt, I don't expect it to last very long. In any case, here's the rod action. So instead of the jerk shad, I'm not really popping it on slack. It's sort of a slow lift and swim, letting it pendulum back towards the bottom. If you try to jig too aggressively with the Easy Shiner, the tail will loop back around and catch the hook point almost every time. It's just a very soft bait and that's partly why it's so effective. So here's the first keeper and I'll just play these through in sequence. It actually worked out. The smallest one came first, the biggest one came last. As you can see, I jigged the Kitech up. I'm letting it swing back down towards the bottom with the rod tip in the high position. And when I felt the bite, I reeled down to the fish and set the hook. That's very important. You need to remove all the slack in your system. You don't want to set the hook with the rod up high over your head. You're not going to get enough energy behind the hook set, especially since you're going to have a lot of slack in your system. So people ask if we wait a two or three count before setting the hook. We do not. It's just a matter of reeling down to the fish until your rod tip slightly loads up and then we hammer home the hook set from there. So obviously I'm not keeping any fish that day and I try the best I can to keep the fish on wet sand. The last thing you want to do is, you know, breadcrumb them in dry sand if you're going to release them. So if you're not keeping fish, shores, keepers, it doesn't matter, you know, do your best to minimize the time it spends out of the water. As you'll see later, even with that big fish I caught, you know, there's no time for thumbnail photos and fuckery like that. Just, I got a quick wait and I didn't even dig around for the ruler. You know, just get it back in the water as quickly as possible. Weight measurement and especially photos, much easier if you have a fishing partner on hand. As usual, everything I'm using today will be linked in the description below. One note about this rod, it's definitely not something I recommend people go buy just for fluking. It's sort of a waste. Um, but having said that, it is absolutely perfect. I will put it up there with Mark's Graphite Leader Vigore for 
you know, this 316 quarter ounce kind of single jigging. It has a very sensitive tip. Um, it has the right length, 7.6 is probably the shortest I would go, especially if you're jigging out front. And there are some alternatives um, at a much cheaper price point, and I'll list those below as well. So this fish, I didn't bother measuring it, but based on the other two, probably 21, maybe 22 inches. Definitely a nice, healthy fish. And, you know, it's been a while since I caught a number of fluke. I've been mostly freshwater fishing, so it does take a few to get your bearings back to know exactly what's what. Okay, so this is the big fish of the day. And I haven't seen one this size in a few years. Well, I haven't been fluking in a few years, but definitely a treat for me. I'll let this clip run through and just a few more comments near the end. Yeah, pretty nice fish. Barely get my hands around it. Pretty cleanly hooked. I mean, it's deep, but nowhere near its gills. So I do hang this fish on a 15 pound boga grip. It's actually a gift to my cousin Mark. I think it's important that when he does connect with that giant doormat from shore, he gets an accurate weight. And I know people are gonna say, you know, you're hanging it by its jaws and that's bad. Um, look, there's a way to do it. You know, if the fish starts thrashing, you gotta be prepared to lower it back down into the water. So in my opinion, this is a pretty clean release and I'm pretty confident it's still swimming out there today. Okay, so I had a pretty good day with the Kitech Easy Shiner. It's not really a substitute for gulp. Day in and day out, you're not really going to find anything to replicate gulp's drawing power. Especially when the water's a little off-colored, and especially when the fluke aren't really in a mood to eat. Now, the Jerk Shad in particular is just phenomenal at triggering bites. It has a much more erratic action. It makes fish that are otherwise inactive eat your bait as long as you're working it correctly. Whereas the Easy Shiner is sort of a lazy bait fish that's just kind of swimming along. You know, you're not doing much to trigger bites. But when they are eating, when the water is clear, you can do quite some damage on that bait. Um, to me, it's sort of an easier bait to work from shore and it has baked in scent so that when fluke eat it, they actually hold on to it. I hope that makes sense. And one final, final tip. You see my OCD kick in, I'm washing my hands constantly. If you don't, you're gonna get sand in your reel. All right, so thanks for watching guys and stay tuned. Mark has more videos. I'll have more videos once fluke season is over.